Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my Unlimited Game Score series, and today we're going to be talking about the first Uncharted game. So guys, here's a little bit of backstory about me and the Uncharted series. Um, I kind of missed it. Uh, I didn't really try to uh, to find any of it or play any of it because um, I got it confused with another game, and I just that other game didn't look interesting to me, and I missed out. Um, it wasn't until much much later when Sony actually gave away the game uh, in was it uh, 2020? Might have been 2019, but. Uh, they had given the entire collection away and stuff, and uh, I decided to try it because one of my really good friends, Sinshatis, really, really likes the game. And I'm actually, actually the whole series. And I decided, well, it's free, and um, you know, it's 2020, so let's let's just try and see how it turns out. So that's my first experience with this whole series is actually. The collection that was made on the PlayStation 4 and guys I have to say um, I fell in love with it and everything so um, you know let, let's let's just get on with the review Uncharted Drake's Fortune is the first game in the epic tale that is the Uncharted series releasing just one year into the PlayStation 3's lifetime the PlayStation exclusive had the daunting task of creating a world, populating it with characters, fashioning a story to keep the players engaged, and connecting the player to our main character, Nathan Drake. All while showing off the system's capability to potential developers and customers. A critical and commercial success in this, Uncharted propelled the developer Naughty Dog to the reputation they enjoyed during the seventh generation. My first impression of Nathan Drake led me to believe that he was just another gun-toting adventurer, look adventurer looking to get rich. And while he is that, the unfolding story reveals more and more about Nathan's personality, character, and his code of ethics. These build a strong, sturdy bridge connecting the player to our hero. Who doesn't want to be the good guy? The plot of the game is a maze of suspense, puzzle solving, and action. The story gives plenty of urgency to Drake's goals, tying the player emotionally into the game. The memorable dialogue between the cast has a natural flow and a cinematic quality about it. With all of that said, let's get to the game score. As with every game, effort was placed in it, and the, uh, the developers were trying hard to create something that was enjoyable. So, every game starts with a score of three. The next series, the next... The next category is whether or not the game was uh, physical and digital. Uh, this game is actually both available physically and digitally. Next, so it gets a point there. Next is Immersion. This game was definitely immersive. Um, I found myself playing it for hours and hours and losing complete track of time, so it gets a point there. Um, the next category is voice actors in English. Uh, Nolan North as Nathan is is just awesome. Um, I know that he's been used a lot in various every in, in various things, but uh, this is this is where I feel he really got his start, and he just did a great job. And therefore, it gets another point. Uh, the next is game length. Uh, I actually was very happy with the game length uh, within uh, Uncharted. And um, it didn't feel too long like they were trying to pad the clock, and it didn't feel too short like they had run out of money or anything, so they get a point there. 
uh, story. Uh, guys, I, I cannot ruin the story for you, but I am very, very happy with the story in this game. Um, I won't give it a three, uh, which is the highest I would give, but I definitely would give it two points. Level design. Uh, level design was a little bit typical. Um, I mean, it, it was beautiful and all, but uh, if you stripped it down just to the wireframe, then um, you know it's it's classic shooter platformer style. Uh, it still gets a point though. Let's see, next category. Uh, was this game a complete experience? Yeah, I, I feel that this game was a complete experience, so it gets two points. Next up, we have sense of progression. Um, I felt like I was progressing through the storyline, although there's not really any kind of like obvious tells for progression, like uh, leveling up and getting points and talents and all this other stuff. Uh, but I, I definitely felt like I was uh, getting a good progression throughout the game. Here's the next category is fairness slash punishing slash RNG. Uh, I feel this game had a few issues with that, and I'm not so sure if it, if that would be uh, because of the engine and how early it was, it was a little bit rough, or how the um, how the enemies were programmed. But it, it, it felt like that they kind of lost it in that category, so they lose a point. Uh, technical difficulties. Um, like I said, the the engine is not that great on on the first Uncharted game. I'm don't get me wrong. I'm glad I played it, but again, uh, especially in the PlayStation 4 collection, uh, it loses a point. Let's see. Uh, the next category is game value to MSRP cost. Uh, this game. I mean, it came out at full PlayStation 3 price, which was, I think, like $49.99. Um, with the technical difficulties and stuff, I think they should have been a little bit more polished, so it only gets one point instead of two. Soundtrack. I absolutely love the soundtrack in this game. It was enjoyable, it fit the scenes, everything went with it very well, so it gets two points. Next up, we have visuals. Uh, like I said, the game is beautiful. All, all of the backdrop and stuff. It's just really, really, really well done. Uh, so it gets two points here. Difficulty. I don't think the game was too terribly difficult to make it lose points. But I have a feeling that their descriptor was not, um, not as accurate as I would have wanted it to be. Um... I think I think their easy should have been labeled as normal um, and you know that that kind of stuff but uh, so it gets one point there uh, gameplay slash combat guys hand-to-hand -hand is just terrible in this game um, anytime that I had to drop back and do anything where it was you know, I was running out of ammunition or anything like that, and then suddenly I was out of ammo. I, I tried hand-to-hand -hand a couple of times, and it's the one thing that this game constantly fails at. Now, the gun stuff is great, but with the hand-to-hand -hand in there and sometimes having to rely on it, uh, it's it, this game only gets one point out of that category. Camera is the next category, and uh, guys, I found myself fighting the camera a lot in this game, so, um, and that was really a disappointing experience. Um, I try my best not to be negative about things during my, during reviews and stuff and when I'm talking on my YouTube channel, but I, I can't help it. I did fight the camera quite a bit, so the game loses a point here. Easy, Sully. Relax. Unlockables slash rewards. Um, while they were there, and I'm happy they were there, they were not that compelling. Um, but they existed, so the, the game gets a point. And finally, uh, the last one is a sense of accomplishment. 
uh, I definitely felt like I had grown as a gamer and grown as a player for this game. And I was very happy with it. And I absolutely loved the game. Uh, I do not regret playing this at all. So the game gets two points for sense of accomplishment. So now uh, we're going to talk about the total score. Uh, the game gets a total score of 21. And uh, that's a fairly decent score for PlayStation 3 games, um, especially one that had uh, a lot of the the weird difficulty, technical difficulties, and stuff like that. Um, and, and it's a very early release. you got to realize that this game is actually pretty old. Um, but, you know, it's... 21 is a good score. And, well, I mean, that that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, this is my, you know, unlimited... Game score review of Uncharted 1, Drake's Fortune. Um, I really enjoyed the game. Would I suggest that you buy it? Yes, yes I would. Um, and that's it, guys. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing them. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.